Vivian was deeply and bitterly mourning the sudden death of her husband, Christian. The life they had built together over 21 years was flowing away in an instant. Vivian, how will you live now? cried Vivian's cousin at the funeral. You were like a rock behind Christian, and now you're left without support. I can't help you, you understand. I'm not in a position to help. Vivian sat in silence, looking into the distance, thinking and reminiscing. Christian was a beloved husband, but family life with him was not as easy as it might have seemed from the outside. We'll get through this, reassured herself the woman comforting herself. Harry, the elder son, is grown up, has served, will manage. Christian was eight years older than Vivian and, at the time of meeting her, had already been divorced. His first wife was capricious and he often had to indulge her with flowers and pleasant surprises just for no reason at all. Christian, you're my true knight. Do as I ask, buy new earrings, wash the dishes, take out the trash. I have a headache. Christian had endured that marriage for only four years. There were no children and the wife asked him to wait. He got tired of giving himself entirely to the relationship when there was no reciprocity, only endless requests and... Christian dreamed of a relationship with an independent, not a weak woman. Vivian, despite her youth 23 years old, had mature views on life. She came from a small village, moved to the city to study, successfully graduated from the university, and got a job with a decent salary. She rented an apartment in the city, dreaming of saving up for her own place over time. I know, I've been through it, she told Christian after their acquaintance. I had one suitor who gave me gifts and then reproached me with those gifts. I returned everything to him. Since then, I prefer to buy everything myself and pay for myself. This girl is something, thought Christian. The one I was looking for. Independent, attractive, with a good figure, Vivian fit all the criteria. When Vivian's parents found out about their daughter's relationship, they were against it. If he's divorced, it says a lot. Her mother tried to influence her daughter's opinion. It's not for nothing that his wife left him. Probably your Christian is not as good as you think. Mom, it doesn't say anything, replied Vivian. Not just because his wife left him. Maybe he kicked her out? Christian said that he was the one who initiated the divorce, and I believe him. Daughter, don't you dare move in with him before the wedding. As it's fashionable now, Vivian's father supported his wife if you marry someone else. End of conversation. Christian soon realized that meeting in the evenings was enough. He wanted to live under the same roof with Vivian. Move in with me, he suggested. No, that won't work. The girl shook her head. Why? Because your parents are against it? Christian smirked. It has nothing to do with my parents. I decided it myself. Time passed. Vivian liked Christian, but he didn't rush to propose, wanting to take a closer look at his bride. Once he got burned by rushing into marriage, Vivian fell more and more in love with Christian. Her feelings strengthened every day. She was afraid of losing her beloved. I don't want to wait anymore, she said one day. We are good together, we get along and understand each other. What are we waiting for? I'm tired of these fleeting dates. I want you to be with me always, let's get married. I never thought a girl would propose to me. The man smiled. You haven't answered my proposal, or do you need time to think? I won't think. I agree. Christian liked Vivian's straightforwardness. She always spoke plainly, didn't deceive or manipulate. Unlike his first wife, Vivian was herself. She said what she thought and wanted. This attracted Christian to her. Vivian took on the organization of the upcoming wedding with great enthusiasm. Vivian's parents helped her, although they weren't very happy with her choice. Their attitude towards the future son-in-law didn't change. Christian's parents didn't participate in organizing the celebration. We almost paid for your first wedding entirely, Christian's father grumbled. You haven't had just one wedding. Maybe it's a waste of money. Christian was thrilled with his future wife's initiative. She didn't ask for his help. He just had to pay half the cost of the suit, make a guest list from his side, and approve the menu. Darling, should we order cars? Do as you wish. I would choose a limousine. Order, I don't mind, said Christian. Sweetheart, sometimes it seems to me that you are indifferent to how our wedding will go. I trust you completely. 
I'm sure you will organize the celebration in the best way. Okay, we'll have a limousine, and you need to learn the wedding dance. Let's do it right now and start, Christian said, and twirled Vivian around the room. It cannot be said that Christian loved Vivian, but he was completely satisfied with his choice. He was happy that he got an initiative bride with whom he could relax and be himself. After the wedding, Vivian moved into her husband's apartment. Initially, everything went well. Spouses communicated on equal terms, shared bills for utilities and other expenses. What Christian wanted after the birth of their first child, Harry Christian, he seemed to change. He tried to become an unconditional leader in the relationship. Do as I said. I'm not going to give in to you at all, Vivian constantly heard. The beloved husband, whom Vivian was afraid of losing, a baby in her arms. There was nothing left to do but indulge her husband. The independence that Vivian had cultivated since childhood had to be bid farewell. From the outside, they continued to seem like the perfect family. Only a few noticed that this perfection looked unnatural. After ten years of marriage, the relationship deteriorated, but all the numerous problems remained within the family. In public, the relationship continued to appear cloudless. Vivian's feelings for her husband did not fade. To keep the family, she decided to have a second child, although the first pregnancy was very difficult. More than half of the term she spent in hospitals. The second son, Kyle, was born when the older brother was 12 years old. When Vivian was on maternity leave, she had to listen to her husband's complaints that he was the only one working. Tired of listening to her husband's complaints, Vivian went to work when Kyle was a year and two months old. It cannot be said that the arrival of the second child changed the relationship between the spouses. The apartment taken on mortgage and the unwillingness to pay child support for two children hindered Christian from filing for divorce. Vivian's love for her husband got in the way. And the sudden death of her husband was a blow to Vivian. The sad news caught the family when Harry was supposed to return from the army any day. He didn't make it to his father's funeral. When the family returned home from the funeral, Harry declared first thing. From now on, I am the head of the family, he said looking expressively at his mother and younger brother. So do as I said. Vivian was initially stunned. She did not expect such words from Harry. Then it became easier for her that the burden of responsibility and care fell on her grown-up son. The family began to live the same life as before. Only Harry took over as the head. Mom, where are you going? Visiting again. And did you prepare lunch for me for tomorrow? The elder son looked questioningly at his mother. Harry, what do you mean again? I was in visit last time two months ago. I'm going to school. Today is a parent meeting. I'll come back and prepare lunch for you. He's in you dressed up. Why? It's only been three months since dad is gone. And you put on makeup. Harry, I can't go to school looking like a rag. What will people think of me? You should observe mourning for your father. The son frowned with black eyebrows, just like his father used to do. You won't bring back father. Vivian cried and mascara ran down her cheeks. You have to live on, my son. With each passing day, Harry became more and more like his father. In every glance, in every gesture, Christian could be discerned. Yes, I am the head of the family. You will do as I say. I'm not going to yield to you at all. Now these words were heard from Harry by the household. Vivian decided on a new relationship. She met Oliver by chance. It happened a year and a half after her husband's death. Oliver was 48, divorced. The adult daughter recently made him a grandfather, giving him a granddaughter. The younger son knew that his mother had a boyfriend. The boy could keep a secret, so Vivian didn't hide anything from him. Harry tried not to say anything until the last moment, knowing that his reaction would be negative. He learned about Oliver when Vivian and Oliver decided to live together. No, I won't allow it, Harry shouted. And what about Dad? Have you forgotten about the person you lived with for more than 20 years? Harry, I haven't forgotten about him and never will. He is the father of my two sons and will remain in my heart forever. I understand my son. I'm 46. I'm a young woman. It's hard to be alone. No, I don't understand and never will. Despite the vehement protests of the elder son, Vivian, along with the younger son, left for all of them, they settled outside the city, where the man had a two-story house. You traitors, I don't want to know you anymore. 
Harry shouted after them. Three years passed. Harry lives in the apartment left by his mother. He hasn't forgiven her or his brother. He hasn't forgiven them so much that he didn't even invite them to his wedding. Vivian learned about her son's marriage from a cousin. What can you do? It seems I didn't deserve an invitation. My mother bitterly smiled. I feel sorry for the girl. The relative shook her head. They say she's a good girl, Harry loves her, listens to him and everything, and he manipulates her as he wants. We know, we've been through it, Vivian said quietly. Her trademark phrase, do as I say, I'm not going to yield to you at all, will now be constantly heard by my daughter-in-law. Dear friends, if you liked this story, subscribe to my channel, give it a like and share your opinion in the comments. And from the bottom of my heart, I wish you all the best. Strong health, peaceful skies above your head, and a good mood.